Hi and welcome back to the next lesson. In this lesson we will continue to build our front page or our main overall equipment failure risk status page and we're going to build the prerequisites that we need in order to generate this this um, this text here that gives us an overall equipment risk status. So to do that we need a few different fields and a calculated, new calculated columns added to the measure uh, added to the data model and we need some measures as well. So let's go and we'll start to create those. So as a reminder, these are the outputs that the overall risk status can generate. So it can be a red, it can be an orange, it can be a yellow, or it can be a green output. Now the rules that determine each one of these and this is a text that will accompany each one of these, are based on the, the count of the number of work orders or defects that are in each of these different areas within the risk matrix. Now, at the moment, we have got a risk ranking number or the risk number, which is a concatenation of the likelihood and the severity. So we can see here that, for example, this this square here is square number 15, refer to square number 15. And number 15 is basically the, yeah, number 15 is the concatenation of these two likelihood and severity numbers. So 15, this one here is two and five, 25. This one here is five and five, so it's 55. Now that's needed and necessary because each one of these needs to be unique. Okay, each one of these coordinates needs to be unique so that we can, once we carry out the calculation, we know and Power BI knows where to put the count of work orders, where exactly which square to put the count of work orders into. And that's great for that particular application, but when it comes to grouping them together, we like to be able to group things, or certainly to make life easier for ourselves, we'd like to be able to group things by saying um, the number that represents high, which is this red area, is above a certain value. The yellow area is between a certain upper and lower threshold value, and then green is below a certain value. Now, we can't do that with the current setup because we can see here that we've got values ranging from 15 to 35 to 42, up to 51, 52. So it's going to be very difficult to, or what we're going to have to do is explicitly state these numbers belong to this area here. So it would be doable, but it would just be a little bit of um, extra coding. Now the other thing, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create another value that represents these and it's going to be the multiplication of these two values together. So this square here would be, instead of 25, would be 2 times 5, which would be 10. And we're going to call that a risk ranking. And that's going to allow us to be able to say anything above a certain value is red, between a certain, below a certain value and above a certain value is yellow, and then below a certain value is green. So I'll just show you how that works. And here are the risk ranking values. And we'll create one of these pre and for, for the pre and the, for the post mitigation um, risk ranking. And we can see here that the the value here, one times five is five, or five times five is 25. And it's gonna be a lot easier for this to say anything above 15 is gonna be in this risk grouping here. Anything between five and 12 is in this risk grouping here. And anything below four is in this risk grouping here. Now we couldn't use it to explicitly state the, the, the coordinates because four might be here, might be here, might be here. But if we're grouping everything that together as being green, then it doesn't, doesn't matter at all. So that is what we're going to do when we go across to Power BI. Okay, so we're back in Power BI and we're going to go and create these calculated columns that represent the, uh, the risk ranking for each one of these. So whenever I create a risk ranking, I really, or sorry, a new column, I'm going to go to this data view here, and I'm going to click on a uh, new column in here. And then I'm just going to paste the value in here. So risk ranking pre-mitigation is equal to, now what we're going to essentially do is we want to multiply these two values together. So we could have split the columns using the query builder into two different columns, multiplied them together, then deleted them, or even left them if we needed them, if we thought we might use them again. However, we can do this all within the DAX, which is used to calculate the contents of the new column. 
So we're going to go and create variables. So the first variable is going to be a likelihood, and it's going to use, they're both going to use the same sort of setup. And it's going to use value, which if I just show you the text here, value converts a text string that represents a number into a number. So we're going to go and treat this as a text string. And then we're going to pull off the first the first part of that text string, which is number the, the first character in that text string, which is the number two in this example here, using this left variable here, or left function here, which if you used Excel before, you've probably used something that may have used something similar to this. So it takes the leftmost character, or starts from the left, and takes the text that represents these number of characters. And we just want there to be one character from the left, which is going to be this number two here. So it's essentially going to just take the first number in that pre-mitigation likelihood severity number. And then for severity, we're going to do the same, but we're going to start from the right to just count back one. And then the result is going to be those two numbers, likelihood and severity, which are going to be forced to be numbers because we've got this value here that forces them to be numbers. So we can multiply them together and that's going to provide us with the result that we need. So we can see that indeed risk ranking pre-mitigation, which is looking at this, this field here, is going to be 2 times 3, which is 6. Now let's look at another one here. Let's look at 3 times 3, so that should be 9. I'll just move that along slightly. Yeah, we can see they're all 9s. So that seems to be working fine. And um, we're just going to go and do exactly the same for the post mitigation number here. So I'm going to take this column here. I'm going to copy the text out of here, the DAX. I'm going to add a new column. And I'm going to call this post mitigation risk ranking. Now I need to go, go and change each one of these to post. And this will allow the other column to be the post. So the post mitigation likelihood severity number. This will allow that to be referenced when we carry out that multiplication. And we go in here and we can see there's plenty of these in here. So all the way from 1 through to 25. And that is going to allow us to then create the next field, which is going to be a risk grouping. So that will be covered in the next lesson. I'll talk to you then.